Is your Anno 1800 city bleeding cash? Are you tired of spending countless hours building your city only to be faced with the defeat screen because of bankruptcy? Well, in this guide today, we are going to teach you all the mechanics regarding cash flow and cash within Anno 1800, so that way we can keep your bank account full and your city thriving. The topics included in this money guide are population needs and happiness and the math behind it that results into your income, trading from your warehouse your surplus goods for extra cash and how to do that, using propaganda to boost your economy, creating and selling ships for massive profit, buying and selling shares from other players, and totally buying out an island to wipe them out. So the first thing we need to do is go over what information is available to you and where to find it in regards to money. Most of the critical information you're going to need is found up in the top left of your screen. Starting from left to right, you have the dollar sign and the numbers next to it, which is your total balance of cash available to you to spend at that very moment. Next to that are three bars that look like a cell phone signal and then a either negative or positive number. And this denotes whether you are making money or losing money. Obviously, if it's negative and red, that means you are currently losing money. And if it's positive, you are making money. Then to the right of that is three little stick figures with a number next to that. And that is your total population. And that is also critical to money because the more population ha you have, the more money you can make. So let's go ahead and break these down into more detail. So if we actually hover over these icons in the top left, we get even more detailed information, which is critical to understanding how money works in Anno 1800. For instance, when we hover over the balance icon, we get a breakdown of everything that is generating income or cash, and then everything we are actually spending our cash on. And this is what the end result is, whether it's a positive or negative number. And yes, you want it to be positive and you want that number to be as big as possible because that means you're making money really fast. So we're going to break down exactly what generates money and how that works, as well as what costs you money that you may not be expecting or aware of and how we can take advantage of both those things in order to maximize our profits. Generating cash is very limited when you first start out in Anno 1800. The only way you're going to get your city going is by having population and then getting the tax income from them. So let's break down the math behind this and how it actually works. So you only are able to put down farmhouses at the beginning. One farmhouse can hold up to 10 population, but when you put it down, it will only have one person in it. And this information can be found when you click on a single house and in the bottom right, you can see the population sign above the circle. This is how we can see the population for each particular house. Then underneath that circle is a list of all the needs and whether they're met. If it's met, then it will turn green. If it's blue or gray, then that means we either don't have access to it or we're not supplying enough to that particular house, so that needs to be addressed. Then underneath that is more critical information. The dollar sign will actually show how much income this one house is generating for us. And then to the right of that is the number of workforce or workers that this house is providing. So as we can see, when we build a one house, even with the population of three, because it's next to a marketplace, it is still not generating any cash for us. So we're losing money by just having one house. So the way to fix that is to obviously build more houses so we can unlock the rest of these needs, then meet these needs and fill up the houses, and then they will start generating an income. And if we do that, at a large enough scale, then our balance will turn positive because we are increasing our profits. The beauty in Anno 1800 is in order to make money, you must spend money. So you have to build factories in order to produce the needs that your population needs. So the biggest tip that I can give you guys for keeping your cash balance positive is only build things when you need them and don't pre-build because that can really turn your cash flow negative and then, the, then you're gonna head towards bankruptcy. So only when your population says, hey, we don't have enough fish, or hey, we don't have enough work clothes, should you then consider building a building or placing a building to address that issue? Because it's gonna cost you money to do that. So as you can see here, once you meet all of the needs for one particular house, your population will reach 10, which is a farmhouse's max. And this will generate you a total of five cash and 10 workforce. So that means if you build a row of 20 houses, that will generate 100 cash for you. So now you're probably thinking, wow, that's not that much money for one farmhouse. And you're right, but there's a way to double that from five to 10. 
and that is through happiness. If we meet all the requirements to keep the farmers in each farmhouse happy, then they will pay more taxes. And so that will actually double your income. So we go from making 100 for 20 houses to 200 for 20 houses, which is 10 per house. And this is done by meeting all of the needs and all of the happiness for each house. Now, I don't wanna go into too much detail on the number of factories per population. Uh, we may do a guide on that later, uh, but all I wanna reiterate is that only build when you realize you need it. Do not pre-build and you should be safe. Uh, you have plenty of time to put something down and meet the needs before anything crazy happens. So just whenever you notice that, hey, this bar isn't green, we're not meeting this need, then put a fact one factory down to meet that need and then see how it affects the population and their happiness. And then if it's not enough, then you can put another one down. So now that you understand the math behind a farmhouse, let's go ahead and fast forward time here and you can see me building my city and my population in small increments, building blocks of houses and ensuring that I'm meeting their needs in order to maximize my income. But then something particularly interesting happens. You would think, okay, I can just spam farmhouses and make crap tons of money and then upgrade them. But there's a mechanic in the game that isn't very detailed that prevents you from doing this. And this mechanic is the royal tax mechanic. There's not much information available. Ubisoft has responded to a Reddit post confirming that this mechanic does prevent you from just spamming a particular tier, enhances you or uh, entices you, I should say, to upgrade to the second tier or to the next tier. Uh, but as you can see here, once your population for farmers reaches around the 1,000 to 1,100 mark, we're hit with royal taxes and it's actually hitting us minus 11 cash. Now, as we build more farmhouses, this number will increase. The game's basically saying, you're building too many farmhouses, you need to upgrade or we're gonna tax you. And so this is gonna cut into our income. And this is applied to every tier within the game, tier one through tier five. Your workers, your artisans, all of them, if you build too many of them, you will get royal taxes. Now, I'm not saying that you should avoid royal taxes, but you need to understand why that is there and what's causing it. So that way, if it's eating too much into your income, then you know to upgrade your buildings. So in this example provided, with about 1,100 farmers and just enough factories to meet their needs, we are generating 560 profit, but we are also getting hit with minus 23 in royal taxes. So let's go ahead and upgrade to tier two where we unlock workers and see how this will attribute to our cash flow and how we can use this to generate even more cash. So when we upgrade a farmhouse to a worker house, it increases the population cap for that single unit to 20. Uh, so that means your population will double once you max it out. But again, in order to max it out, you need to meet all of the needs. And then that is only half the income you can generate because then you need to meet all of their happiness in order to get max income for that particular house. So the next possible way for you to make money after you get started is probably going to happen through trade. And this can generate a pretty good amount of cash for you as well. Understanding how trade works in this game and how it generates income is also very important and can be a very good source of income for you, especially in the early to mid game. To generate money in trade, it can be done in a few ways. The first way is by just setting goods in your warehouse that you have a surplus of to sell and ships that you have trade rights with or I should say other AI or players that you have trade rights with will come by and buy those goods when they need them and this is probably the easiest and most simple way to do it uh, but maybe not the most efficient and fastest so as we can see here we have lumber and coal set to sell now when you click your warehouse you can click on a good and set it to sell and you can set the amount that you want to keep and then they will sell the rest. Now this doesn't happen automatically. The way it works is, is once you set the sell order, then any player that you have trade rights with will send a ship over when they need or when they're on their way, and then they will buy the goods from you and then that is how you make income. So it doesn't happen automatically, but this is probably the cheapest way to do it because it doesn't cost you any ships. So at the beginning, you probably don't have trade rights with anybody, but that's okay. 
Depending on your settings, if you do normal or advanced, uh, there's one AI that is super friendly and he's usually on the edge of the map. And if you just send one of your ships to kind of scout around, you'll eventually run into him and you should start with trade rights with him automatically. It's important to discover him because then he can start sending his ships to your warehouse and buying your goods at a very early part in the game, which could add a lot of income and help you grow faster. Then of course you can get trade rights traditionally through diplomacy with other players, uh, but that takes a little bit more effort through doing quests and all that. So another way you can make income or cash through trading is by manually setting your trade routes. Now if you don't know how to create trade routes, now's a good time to go check out my other guide uh, on how to create trade routes. So go ahead and look at the link at the top right and uh, go check that out if you need some help there. Now you're probably wondering, well how do I know how much money I'm making from these trades when an AI comes and picks up my lumber? Well, we can see this through the trade history menu. If you click your harbor, in the top right, there's a little clock symbol. If you click that, that will actually bring up this menu where you can see all your previous transactions, what was sold or bought, and what the outcome was in terms of cash, whether you made money or lost money. Of course, if you're only selling things, then you're gonna make money. And then if you're also curious what each particular item would, is going for, if you go back to the trade harbor screen and hover over an item, down at the bottom, it'll tell you how much it goes for per item. And so this will give you a good indication of an item's worth. One of my favorite ways to make a lot of money in Anno 1800 is by selling ships. And it's pretty easy to do. So once your city's set up to actually manufacture ships, once they're created, you can send them to a harbor of a friendly player. And once they're sitting in their harbor, if you click on the ship and go to the top right, there's a dollar sign. You click that, and then that is how you can sell the ship. You can sell frigates for 50,000 in cash. So that is a huge boost to your economy if you're able to produce ships and sell them to the AI. Another really good source of income is through shares or dividends. And this is a pretty cool feature. So if you go to any player's island, once you've discovered it, obviously, at the top, there's a little circle that is divided up into five sections. It looks like a pie and it's, it's the color of whatever their color is. When you click that, it opens up the share menu. Each one of these sections is a share. So everybody has five shares and the value of that is based on the economy of that particular island, not the entire empire. So every island has its own shares and each one will give you a dividend. And so this can add up. Now they can be pretty expensive, but getting plus 800 or plus 600, or if you have a whole bunch like plus 3000 to your economy is a huge boost. Uh, so this is something that once you're generating a little bit of cash, you definitely want to look into, but keep in mind it does make the players angry. So if you're trying to stay peaceful with someone, you do want to be wary of buying their shares, but it's a good way to make money. And then fun fact is once you buy all five of a share or all five shares of one island, then you have the ability to buy out the entire island and it's super expensive depending on the progression of the player. But if you do this, it will wipe them off and this is a way to beat enemies without going to war with them. So you can actually win the game through economy me which makes this guy even more useful now there are tons of other ways you can make money in this game uh, but these are the main ones and then the last one i want to leave you with isn't something that i would rely on uh, but it's important to know because it can be a good source of income and add a, a huge boost to your economy uh, especially in wartime and that is through propaganda so you probably notice whenever the guy comes up with the newspaper you can edit the news articles. Consumerism is an attribute that you can change the article to and this will give you increases in income. As you progress through the tiers and gain more influence, the percentage that you can edit the article to is higher. So you have 5% at the beginning, but in the mid game you have plus 15%. So as you can see here, when I do a 15% article, I'm getting a plus 4,500 consumption tax because of these articles. So I'm getting a huge boost to my economy. I mean, plus 4,500 just from my propaganda. All in all, if you just follow these tips, only build factories that you need to keep your population's happiness and meet their needs, then you're maximizing your efficiency and your profits, and you shouldn't have any problems staying above water. And that concludes the money guide for Anno 1800. Before you leave, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up the video. We post videos at least once a week, usually regarding strategy games. So if you want to be notified, definitely hit the subscribe button. Also, if you're shopping on the Epic Game Store, do not forget to use your creator code code Icy Mike that directly supports this channel as well and we will see you guys in the next video.